shocked. You thought you were a Sigma because you gave up everything for your dreams. You became the GG Akutami of your universe with the most successful manga series to date. However, what happens when you discover you've only got a few years left to live? Meet Akira Kamashiro, a cursed successful artist who is met with a grim fate while pursuing his dreams. Akira is given a second chance at life where he chooses to reject his ambitions and seeks to live a normal life. Unbeknownst to him, Akira possesses a godly cheat ability that puts him beyond anyone else in his world. Let's discover what that ability is and where it leads him by jumping into this story. Akira Kamashiro was a talented and resilient mangaka who won an award for selling 50 million copies of his most famous work. Akira shines the brightest and has been promised a successful career since he sold a million copies at age 18. The author was widely considered the author of the century for his work. As he continued to climb the ladder, he became stingy with his editors and friends. They thought of him as a psychopath, and his girlfriend left him to live an extreme life. Even facing such losses, Akira didn't regret a single ounce of what he did. That is because he won through his success, believing in his righteousness. However, he was dead wrong and couldn't fail to realize it back then. One fateful day, Akira discovered that he had suffered from a disease that influenced his blood circulation. In very simple terms, Akira discovered that he had blood cancer. The alarmed yet concerned manga artist was told that he had no more than 10 years to survive, even with the best possible treatment. The snob artist began to cry, unable to accept the reality that was put before him in his youth. To make matters worse, the procedure required him to bring his family. However, Akira's calculating and cold lifestyle had already isolated him from everyone he knew in life. That is when he truly accepted the fact that he had nothing and no one to care for in his life. The promised life that he had created so far was nothing more than a puppet show of a miserable and empty life. Suddenly, Akira's phone begins to ring. His mother calls him to inform him that she's struggling with the rent and wants a hundred thousand yen for it. Akira grows even more saddened, knowing that his mother leads an expensive lifestyle and only asks for money. With a miserable expression, he relays to his mother the news of terminal cancer. He begs his mother for her aid. The young man is afraid of the horrors of death. He requested his mother to come for the treatment of the procedure. Akira's mother does accept coming along. However, she presses for him to transfer the staggering amount, despite learning of her son's disease. Akira is struck with unending sorrow that his mother cares more about money than his well-being. Completely devastated by her words, Akira spirals out of control and cusses her mother for her gambling addiction. Akira gives in to his rage and doesn't notice a mother and her daughter right in front of him. He frantically takes a sharp turn to avoid running them over. However, this move comes at the cost of his life. Akira's life, as he knew it, had now come to an end. In his memories, he remembered that he wanted to secure a peaceful life for himself. The first ever time the boy gets to experience that peace is exactly when his life comes to an end. However, Akira is shocked because he stands in the middle of nowhere unable to discern the location. Akira grows worried about the mother and child with whom he had the unfortunate encounter. Suddenly, a system screen pops up in front of him, relaying the message that his life has come to an end. The shocked young man collects his thoughts. Strangely, the system instructs him to choose his mother for his new life. Akira is struck and confused by the odd prompt posted by the system. At once, Akira is presented with five stunning options. Ursula promises him the life of royalty, while Melora promises him the life of a millionaire, among others. Akira connects the dots and quickly realizes that this is supposed to be a true reincarnation in the real world. Of course, this time, it's not in any manga, but in real life for him. Akira finds his options intriguing, as they're filled with luxurious advantages. Akira knows that choosing any one of these girls could set him up for life. He grows furious in his frustration, realizing that he was completely destroyed in the process of achieving his fame and wealth. Nothing accompanied the man more than his loneliness. A spiteful Akira is looking to redeem himself and wholeheartedly despises the concept of the curse of wealth. The final option that seems pleasing to him is that of the commoner mother, who promises him the peace that he has been missing his entire life. She is the daughter of the magic shop owner, Diva Roland. Akira questions if she is the result of his anguish and desire for peace. Even though she doesn't have a promising portfolio fit with fame and wealth, Akira finds her most charming aspect to be her smile. Akira already feels compelled by this woman, with her welcoming gesture. Finally, a choice is made. Akira's new mother is selected as Diva Roland, and that is how it happened. Akira's parents celebrated their cute little newborn, welcoming him to his new life. Seven years quickly pass in the blink of an eye. 
In the royal capital, Stormheim, Akira and his mother help out their customers in the magic shop. Akira Rainford reinstates his life as a seven-year-old boy, who shares a joyous smile. As the peak hours have already faded for the shop, Diva tells the young boy to spend his time playing. However, Akira turns her down, because he wants to fulfill his father's request to take care of his mother. Akira promises not to leave his mother's side until his father's return. Diva carves a cute smile and hugs the little boy for showing her love. The adorable boy embraces his mother with delight. Akira is no stranger to the memories of his previous life, where he had gone down the path of isolation. Akira's previous life was utterly destroyed in hopes of pursuing his ambitions. Carl, Akira's father, returns home to greet his son. Akira wants to ensure that his life is different at this time. This time, he doesn't want to become ambitious or above average. He wants to secure a peaceful and quiet life, where no one pressures him to become successful. Akira has had the fortune of having a loving family in this reincarnation. He doesn't want anything more than a peaceful place for himself, a life where he doesn't lose what should be considered normal. Carl tells his son that he's bought him a delicious cake. Akira sparks joy, until he hears the voice of his despicable horrors. This voice became a barricade to his happiness, a voice that became his obstacle to his peace. It was the beautiful maid, Arya. Since Arya is the strict caretaker of the boy, she scolds him against eating snacks before his dinner. Arya emphasizes that it's bad for his education, and confronts the boy about skipping his sword training. In a matter of moments, Akira is shoved away in their sword fight training. Arya is firm in her teaching, and advises the boy not to repeat his mistakes. The fact is, Akira doesn't really have a talent for magic or swordsmanship at all. Arya is the one thing that Akira regrets in this life. She's a maid who has been there ever since the beginning of his new life. Arya boasts a mysterious background, but she is an elf blessed with perfection in swordsmanship, magic, and housework. In simple words, she's the definition of overpowered, and she does all of that while being a simple maid. One big problem is that Arya treats the young boy as an enemy of some kind. Arya orders him to land a hit on her, or else she will eat the same cake that his father bought him. Akira is stunned by the audacity of the cake-stealing maid, because she's saying this to a seven-year-old. Akira doesn't even know why the elf with the milkers hates him to this degree. Akira's suspicion is that this woman is secretly a homewrecker who likes his father. Akira's sharp eyes have always been on the maid. Akira thinks that it's because of that, she's stingy with his peace. He thinks that it is the only reason Arya hates him to begin with. The young and scheming boy hopes to reveal the true nature of the elf once he grows up. He's conjuring a million evil plots in his head, so Arya bashes him to proceed with his magic lesson. Arya assigns him some heavy-duty magic work, and if he fails to accomplish it properly, he will have no snack to eat. Akira is dumbfounded about what to do with a magic scroll. It's an everyday item in this world, to store magic power. A magician could write the incantation of magic inside the scroll, imbuing it with magic energy. However, Akira regrets his life's decisions, because it's going to take him hours to do these many. The scheming lad decides to outsmart the elf by exploiting the use of his secret, cheat owner. Despite possessing absolutely no talent in the realm of magic or swordsmanship, Akira is blessed with a unique ability that transcends the laws of their world. The ability in question allows him to achieve any desired effect of magic, so long as he can draw an illustration of it. Using this cheat ability, he could exploit the benefits of the scrolls at a much faster rate through drawing instead of writing. Akira sparks another idea of the possibilities he could exploit with this kind of magic. For example, he remembers the time he drew a monstrous slime to attack the scum maid who ruined his life. Meanwhile, Akira enjoyed the scenes from behind as a result of his experiment. Akira remembers spreading a magic circle on the water of the lake and drawing a monster. The monster materialized through his creation, since the materialization of a life scroll can't be done on a magic scroll. Akira dubs it summoning magic and thinks that he's got his hands on wicked power beyond this world. For example, Akira thinks he could revolutionize the world through his magic ability, just like how he influenced the lives of the people in his career as the greatest author of his time. However, he once again remembers the result of what happened when he became successful last time. Akira doesn't want to relive the hellscape from which he liberated himself. That is why, instead of revealing this ability to the world, Akira decides to conceal it in the hopes of continuing his peaceful life. The following day, the stubborn Arya declares that she is unconvinced of the boy's ability to finish the assignment. In fact, she orders him to make a scroll on the spot, since he did so many things so fast. Arya states that the scroll shouldn't have been finished so soon, despite their perfection. 
Arya interrogates the boy, questioning the various things that stand out from the assignment. She asks him a million questions, which all confuse Akira because he can barely come up with an answer. Arya implores him to do one more scroll in front of her eyes, adding to the boy's despair. She casually tears apart his excuses and how it would have been impossible to complete the assignment with his given routine. Arya emphasizes that she doesn't care about the boy's inability when it comes to his talents, but she's extremely frustrated that he chose to lie. Arya pressures him to share how he cheated. Somehow, he remembers the words of his staff from his previous life. Akira finally speaks, questioning if he's not allowed to slip up just a little. He despises the idea of working harder and getting caught in a life of dread. Akira runs off to escape from his family because of the reoccurring treatment. Later, Akira comes to the lake that he always frequents when he feels down. Even with this development, Akira doesn't know the kind of excuse he can make to slide past Arya's interrogation. Suddenly, he thinks that he overstepped a boundary and spoke cruelly of the maid. Akira notes that it was the first time he had ever seen such an expression on her face. He wonders if he should return to his family and apologize to the elf maid. Suddenly, Arya protects him from being curb stomped by a monster. They barely survive the encounter, but Arya suffers a major wound that knocks her out of commission. Akira is left to fend for himself against the Horned Beast, a monster of the forest rogue, called the Basilisk Dragon. The Basilisk Dragon tries to attack them again. Arya begs the little boy to run away. The dragon catches hold of the injured elf. Arya begs him to run away while she plays the bait to the beast. Akira questions why the maid came to find him. He doesn't understand anything because she has shown him so much hatred. Arya tells him that he is under a misunderstanding, as she has always considered the young boy to be part of her family. Because of that, she had a compelling desire to protect Akira. Akira becomes aware of the veil of stupidity he had blinded himself with. Akira feels guilty for not realizing sooner that Arya is different from the editors who knocked him around to do more work. Despite her strict demeanor, Arya never left the boy's side and always protected him no matter what. Even at this point, the elf begs him to run away to save his life. Akira takes a stand, realizing that Arya is the only one who recognizes his needs. He shocks the elf by standing his ground and refusing to run away. Weaving his hands, the boy comes to a decision. Akira will protect the peaceful places in his life, including Arya who has taken a place in his heart. At once, the boy chants canvas and layers a magic circle on the lake. Akira then visualizes the one thing that could save him from this mess. Using the talent of drawing that he had perfected in his previous life, Akira decides to create an exact replica of the basilisk dragon. The beast materializes in destructive might. Arya is wholly stunned by the boy's command over summoning magic. The two dragons fight each other. However, Akira is starting to feel the harsh effects of his ability. Since he doesn't possess an ample amount of magic, Akira faces much difficulty, and yet refuses to back down from his attack. The boy knows that his previous life was more tortuous than the obstacle in front of him. He channels his full ability, powering his basilisk dragon to defeat the original. With the threat eliminated, Akira's consciousness fades with the relief that he saved Arya from the dragon. Akira's materialized dragon fades along with him. The beautiful elf maid is bewildered after discovering that the boy possesses such a unique power, despite having no talent for magic. She takes his body and confirms that the boy is, in fact, the child of Carl and Diva. Akira's concerned mother weeps as the boy regains consciousness after being out of commission for three days. Akira himself is shocked that he has been knocked out for so long. Diva cries about her son's condition. It appears that Diva doesn't know the details of the incident, since she thinks he exhausted his magic. Akira was most worried about Arya, and he was glad that she was safe now. He doesn't know why his mother is unaware of his cheating skills. Arya speaks and tells the boy that his father made him drink an elixir to restore his magic prowess. An elixir is considered an object of premium value and isn't something any adventurer is capable of obtaining. Akira's parents have been worried sick and refused to sleep because of his condition, making him sad. Arya caters to the mother who thought her son was in danger. Akira feels devastated, having made them feel this way because of his selfish actions. Carl, Akira's father, returns screaming that he couldn't discover the drain bat who sapped his boy of magic. Suddenly, Carl discovers that the boy has regained consciousness. Akira apologizes to his father for making him worry to this extent. Carl's worries finally subside as he slowly exhausts himself of energy. Carl fainted while he was standing. That night, Akira rests in his bed, thinking about the complexities of the magic. If one's magic power is depleted, they actually die. 
The consequence is similar to dying of starvation, since magic is essential for humans in this world. The only reason Akira even survived this incident is because of the elixir. The seductive body of the elf manifests as she questions if the boy is facing trouble trying to sleep. Akira is flustered by her beauty. Arya explained that she wanted to check on his condition since she could hear him groaning from the other room. Arya suddenly notices that Akira's face is pent up and hot. She wants to call his mother, thinking of it as an emergency. However, the distressed boy emphasizes that it's not because of her beautiful chest and that she certainly doesn't have to call his mother. Akira wants his mother to rest after staying restless for three days. The maid acknowledges the situation and decides to share some of her bodily warmth with the boy. Her embrace shocked him. Arya revealed that Akira's body is going to take a while to adapt to the elixir's regeneration process. She wants to help him with the circulation of magic for the night. However, Akira's heart is pacing at an incredible speed, thanks to her sudden embrace. He had always hated the elven maid for ruining his peace. A spell of comfort takes over him. Akira surrenders to the warmth of Arya's body and feels at peace. The boy apologizes to the elf, claiming that she loves Carl, which is why she treats him so harshly. Akira apologizes for getting in the way and being a thorn in Arya's path. However, the silly boy is struck with the blow of embarrassment when Arya reveals that she has never had any interest in Carl. She reminds him that they have had a relationship since his birth. She clears up his misunderstanding that she has no thoughts of becoming a homewrecker to the family and has only focused on her job as a maid. Akira is stunned by her words because it makes him even more embarrassed than ever. Suddenly, the elven maid reveals that although her interest in Carl was a misunderstanding, she has always wanted to become his woman. Arya calls herself an imperfect vessel and calls Akira a summoner. The fact that he has summoned an enormous monster at the age of seven concludes that he's a genius prodigy, even among the summoners. Arya believes that Akira has something special and will inevitably become so much stronger upon honing his powers. In a way, she is excited to witness the extent of his growth. Arya believes that this kind of power is considered divine. Even though she compliments him and has high hopes for the boy's future, Akira doesn't feel pleased because, throughout this time, he doesn't want expectations to drown him again. Akira knows that at this rate, Arya will soon discover that he is reincarnated. He needs to come up with a good excuse that fools her about his powers. Arya finally questions why he had been hiding his powers throughout this time. The fact is that summoners are powerful people and extremely rare. Upon their discovery, they are immediately treated like royalty and are promised wealth and fame from the beginning. Akira capitalizes on the conversation and makes his move. Akira reveals that he doesn't want to be separated from his current life, which is with his family. That is the reason he concealed his powers. Akira wants to continue the magic shop once he grows and becomes an adult. Revealing his special ability would threaten such a future and destroy his peace. Akira emphasizes that he wants to inherit the store no matter what, begging Arya to keep the matter of his powers a secret. The boy wonders if he was able to persuade the elf. The elven maid reveals that she would still have to consult his father for the matter. Arya explains that, while Akira's reasons are valid, he's a boy whose future should be decided by his family as well. There is also the problem that Arya isn't supposed to keep any secrets from his parents as she is a servant. Akira thinks his peaceful life is definitely getting shattered into a billion pieces. However, the elven maid suggests an interesting idea. She states that if she becomes Akira's woman, she will resign from her status as a servant and will support Akira's decisions the most. Akira is once again confused because he hasn't yet understood what she means by the word woman. Arya clarifies that she would become his fated partner and would stay by his side for eternity, always protecting him from harm. Akira puts together the pieces in his head and concludes that she's literally just talking about marriage at this point. He loses his marbles, thinking that a grown elf is proposing to a seven-year-old boy. The offer is so ridiculous that Akira thinks that it's actually a farce. He thinks she is bluffing in order to make him give up and back down. Operating under that assumption, the boy boldly accepts her offer and adds to the ridiculousness of the situation. Akira wants to marry Arya upon becoming an adult. Arya blushes at his words because he mentioned marriage. Akira thinks that he might have blundered again. Arya has no problems with the offer, while Akira thinks he's made enormous progress by thwarting her plans. The fated duo share a tiny pinky promise, never to reveal his powers as a summoner or the talk of their marriage. To ensure nothing goes wrong, Akira tells her that he won't marry Arya if she spills his secret. 
The next morning, Arya decides to test Akira's abilities. She tells him how every summoner requires a contractual agreement with their summons, and she wants to see that process in person. She questions how he was able to sign a contract with the Basilisk Dragon in the middle of nowhere. Akira realizes that he has no choice but to show her his abilities. Akira questions what a contract is, baffling the maid. Arya tells him to stop making jokes, but Akira is firm in stating that he never even made a contract with the monster. The elf doesn't comprehend how a summon could be possible without a contract. Suddenly, Akira draws a slime and makes it appear out of nowhere. The materialization of the slime is solely done by concentrating magic on his fingertips. Akira is able to create anything in his mind and summon at will. Arya is shocked to learn of the extent of his abilities, as he is a summoner who doesn't even require a contract. Arya decides to support him with her own magic to make up for the costs of his energy reserves. She asks him to summon a monster by seeing it from an illustration. The monster appears to be an advanced golem. Akira doesn't know the functionality of the golem, and he also shouldn't be able to summon the creature on his own because of his low mana reserves. That is what Arya believes. Arya knows that it should be impossible for the boy to summon this creature. Akira quickly completes his drawing, while Arya wonders what he's trying to do. Akira explains that he always sketches his creations first, improving the success rate of the process. Finally, he activates his magic and mimics the same thing he did with the Basilisk Dragon. Without fail, the advanced golem is summoned to the battlefield in its indomitable strength. The successful summoning of the towering golem at the hands of the mere seven-year-old is too much for Arya. Not only that, he did it without forming a contract. Arya is starting to think Akira is on a completely different level than the others. He's a monster in his own right that defies the natural laws of their world. And despite being all of that, Akira smiles at her like he couldn't even kill a fly. Akira notes the murderous expression on the elven maid's face. He wonders if he literally fudged up somehow. The elf states that this isn't even the power of a summoner, and his abilities are going to pose him a lot of problems in the future. Arya pleads with him to keep his powers a secret from the world, until she is able to fully decipher his talents. A fearful Arya is protective of the young boy, until he reaches the age where he can protect himself. Akira happily complied, because he had already made an agreement with the servant before, and there was no way he was going to back down now. In a strange way, everything worked out in his favor instead. Akira questions if Arya is also going to keep her end of the promise until he becomes an adult. To answer that question, Arya strikes him down and commands him to stand back up. Arya questions what she's on about since he's found a talent for magic. Akira doesn't understand why Arya wants to train him under the ways of the sword. The devilish maid reminds him that they will train until he's learned the way of the sword. Time passes and Akira is left exhausted after the training arc. He had to endure in the name of honing his sword skills. Not only that, she has also made the training more difficult for him. Akira thinks that he's going to die training at this rate. He doesn't hope to get hurt, so Akira proceeds to draw the elixirs and restores all of his energy in mere moments. His cheat code literally allows him to have access to the most broken materials. The elixir is a potion that is considered a myth, healing both the health points and mana points of the user, increasing one to the maximum limit. While a normal person is lucky to find it once during their entire lifetime, this guy can craft them in mere seconds. Akira has honed his ways in item drawing, and the taste reminds me of an energy drink. However, the benefits are entirely different when compared to energy drinks. Akira is interested in increasing his mana points and doesn't worry much about it. The secret of increasing one's maximum magic limit depends on a technique called firewood splitting dance. Unfortunately, however, Akira is trash and can't even cut a single log. He wonders if the elixir's effects are a scam. Suddenly, a voice tells him that he won't be able to increase his swordsmanship with an elixir. The girl calls him a weakling for not being able to slice through a log. In fact, this short-haired midget is concerned about what he did to the scroll a while ago. Her sudden appearance horrified the living crap out of the boy since he was unable to detect her presence until she was right behind. This means that if she was an enemy, Akira would have been dead by now. The more concerning aspect of this situation is that this girl might have seen his drawing ability. The girl tells him that she has never seen a technique like that before. Akira wonders if she is an aristocrat of some kind, donning a sword with a scabbard and a fancy scarf. Akira tries to derail the conversation, stating that he only used a simple recovery scroll. 
However, the girl is sharp and questions why he drew a bottle before materializing it. Akira doesn't really appreciate her tone since she calls him a kid despite looking the same age as him. Strangely, his words make her roar in laughter since he talks like an adult. Akira is glad that he is able to swing the topic in a different direction. He asks her age, discovering that she turned seven the same year. The both of them are identical in age, so he doesn't know why she started calling him a kid. The girl reveals that Akira is actually a midget for a boy, which is why she said so. In fact, she cleared up the misunderstanding that she didn't really think of him as a commoner and didn't activate the race card either. Akira is surprised to meet a supposed aristocrat who actually has common sense. Thankfully, he was able to distract her from the conversation regarding the secret elixir. Akira apologizes for his attitude and treats her in a nicer tone. The girl refuses to call him anything other than little kid, which strikes a blow to his ego. She even offers to help him out with the wood chopping if he ends it. Akira thinks that an aristocrat shouldn't become busy with such work. He also tells her that he is training for swordsmanship, so that's another thing. Instead of shying away from the task, the girl wants to join him even more. She explains that a sword operates differently from an axe, reminding the boy of his mistake. She teaches him how to hold the blade and tells him to throw a log. Akira does as he is told, throwing the log in her direction. In seconds, she chops the log in half with her insane speed. Her inhuman agility rocks Akira as he fails to comprehend what appears before his eyes. He couldn't even see if she drew the sword. In fact, Akira is certain that the girl's sword dance is superior to Arya's, which is why he is confident in knowing that she is a master at swordsmanship. Akira grapples with the realization that all aristocrats might be the same. Despite being a small girl of her age, she boasts incredible swordsmanship. The girl appreciates his surprised reaction and decides to introduce herself properly. She is Medes Blinsterd, the son of Count Blinsterd, who became the lord of the royal capital. Akira is shocked that it's not actually the girl that he is dealing with but a young boy. Akira is embarrassed because he treats Medes with respect. He praises Medes looks. Medes thinks that it is only natural for Akira to also introduce himself. He introduces himself as the son of the owner of the magic shop. Medes has heard of this magic shop and finds himself impressed that Akira is training in swordsmanship. Akira explains that he's doing it for a reason. Medes questions why Akira is so flustered and if it has anything to do with Medes being a boy. Medes tells him to relax since he doesn't care as much. Medes is glad to make a friend, Akira, as the first in the city. He hopes to extend a happy friendship with the boy. Akira, too, hasn't had any experience meeting aristocrats before. Medes invites him to meet at the same location tomorrow, allowing Medes to learn more about the city. And he's also going to teach Akira swordsmanship. A few days later, Akira bricked up, enjoying a bath with the elf maid. Akira tells her that he doesn't want to be treated like a child. He thinks that it's embarrassing for them to bathe in such a way. The elf maid believes that it's only logical for them to bathe together to save firewood. Akira gets out of the bath, wanting to wash himself. Arya glances at the boy and asks if he has read the book she shared with him in their previous encounter. Akira states that he wants to learn more about the book as well. He's discovered that the book states he is incapable of summoning inorganic substances, but he doesn't understand what it means. Arya explains that one can sign a contract with beings that possess magic. Since there are no magician inanimate objects, or beings that lack a soul, he also can't summon them. Despite that being a rule in summoning magic, Akira reflects that he was still able to create an elixir, which is the same as a non-living object. Akira notes that his abilities differ from those of a typical summoning magician, and that is going to be troublesome for him if it gets found out. He still wants to conserve his peaceful life. The maid questions if the book helped him with its contents. Akira confirms that it indeed helped him learn about the many monsters that can be summoned, with detailed explanations provided to each of them. There is the ancient golem, a divine beast at the top level. Then there is the advanced golem with Akira summon, for example. Arya reminds the boy that she only gave him the book so that he could figure out more about his powers. Arya knows that if the boy summons a high-level monster by himself, running out of magic would be a real problem, since he is at risk of death. Arya demands him to make a promise. She doesn't want him to risk his life and practice summoning more monsters. Akira is afraid because he remembers the pain he underwent while summoning the basilisk dragon. Arya wonders if the boy has magic reserves comparable to those of the legendary hero. Akira has never heard of the term before. Arya explains that the goddesses gave birth to humans, who evolved beyond humanity. That human boasted the strongest swordsman with an infinite mana reserve. 
He was commonly referred to as the God of War. That man possessed red eyes, which were the symbol of the goddess Night. That man is also the strongest human being in existence. The red-eyed hero plagues the boy's mind, but he's not surprised that heroes exist in this world. Arya questions if the boy yearns to be something close to that. Akira doesn't really want to chase the ambitions of a hero like that, since they are the same as his ambitions from his previous life. Akira reminds Arya that he wants to become the owner of the magic shop in the future. He tries to leave and exit from Arya's wrath until his mother barges in. Diva gives him a proper hair dry. Akira welcomes his father home and asks about the boy's health. Carl seems to have an expression on his face, which implores Diva to ask if something happened in the merchant guild. Carl is saddened to reveal that the evil cult has resumed its treacherous objective of kidnapping children. Carl is highly suspicious of the cult, since two children have gone missing today. There are rumors surrounding the involvement of the cult, which is using the children as human sacrifices for their own whims. Carl states that the security of the city has increased. Even then, Carl warns his only son, not to venture to secluded places, as it poses trouble to his health. Akira, on the other hand, doesn't know a thing about the evil cult. Later, Akira trains in swordsmanship with Medes. Medes, being the excellent combatant that he is, destroys Akira through and through. Akira surrenders because of their difference in skill, stating how their levels are far too different. Medes emphasizes that it is unwise for him to try and skip practice. He questions if the boy doesn't have the guts to improve. Akira shifts the topic and asks if Medes knows about the evil cult. Medes is shocked when Akira explains that the evil cult has gone around kidnapping children. Akira thinks that it is wise for them to return home early in order to not worry their parents. Akira states that he's not scared because of those people, but is afraid that he'll get in trouble because he's a lowly commoner. Akira doesn't desire to learn swordsmanship for such kinds of risks. Medes questions the boy, pulling up with the advice of his teacher, who told him that all people possess equal amounts of responsibility. Medes believes that Akira's swordsmanship amounts to nothing if he is not ready to protect other people by taking responsibility for them. Somehow, those strange words eerily remind Akira of his previous life. He was constantly called talented and told that he had a responsibility to bear. Akira believes that Medes' teacher is no different from the scumbags who zapped him of his strength and used him. To counter Medi's words, Akira questions what would ever happen if someone assumes responsibility until the end. Akira believes that the destruction of the talented person in question would amount to nothing in the end. Medi's feels distraught by his words and is affected to the point that he leaves first. Akira is perplexed and wonders if he managed to piss him off in some way. Akira realizes that he is supposed to be a mere kid in this life. He tries to stop Medi's from leaving, but it amounts to nothing. Medes disappears into the wind, leaving behind a sweet smell. Akira feels sleepy and remembers his parents' advice. He also sees a vision of the elven maid, advising him to practice swordsmanship and supervision. That's what he intended to do, at least. It matters very little in the end, since both Akira and Medes are captured in a cell with the rest of the kidnapped children. Akira quickly realizes what happened. He remembers Carl's words about the evil cult using children as sacrifices for their own whims. He can't believe that he's actually been kidnapped by the cult he wanted to avoid so much. Akira finds Medes, who doesn't know what happened either. Medes panics and questions their location. Akira advises him to keep his voice low and shares the miserable reality of their kidnapping. Akira judges their situation, realizing that it could turn out really bad if this is the hideout of the cult. Akira questions if he should summon an advanced golem at this location. While he could do that, they would be at risk of collapsing the structure upon themselves. This is the reason he has to escape from the bars somehow. There is another problem. Arya strictly advised him not to use his powers in front of others. Akira thinks that he should be able to use them in dire need by disguising the spell as a summoning. Medes thinks that it works out in his favor, surprising Akira. Medes shares that they'll break out of the cell and save the children. Akira doesn't comprehend a single word coming out of his mouth. He tries to stop Medes from doing something reckless. Akira argues that the despicable cult is using people as sacrifices, and they have no chance of doing anything without weapons. Medes casts a surge of flame magic, shocking Akira with his added magic abilities. Not only can he expertly maneuver his sword, but he is also a talented magician. Medes explains that he will protect Akira, as that is the responsibility of the powerful. Medes's left eye illuminates in red, reminding Akira of the words of the legendary hero. That is when Akira quickly learns that Medes is not some ordinary aristocrat. He is literally the legendary hero that Arya dubbed the strongest human being alive. 
Arya stated that the legendary hero would possess a sword and magic, and also be blessed with red eyes. This person would be called the God of War. Akira realizes that he has stumbled upon a trump card unlike any other. He no longer feels the need to summon a golem, if the strongest of the strongest is here. Akira is hopeful that they will escape this place, and expects much from Medes. Medes casts his magic, incinerating the bars in his path. Medes emphasizes that he will protect them, so long as they don't leave his side. Akira states that he's not some noble, but a force to be reckoned with. Suddenly, the group is attacked by the members of the evil cult who are stunned that the children were able to escape from their cells. Akira knows that it's troublesome, that the enemy has already caught on to their escape. Medes advises him to stay behind. The evil cult members release a strong spell. However, Medes was able to block all of their attacks with a flame pillar. Medes proceeds to speed blitz the evil cult members. He leaps in the air and prepares a lethal magic spell. The attack annihilates the evil cult members, affirming Akira's belief in Medes' powers. He thinks it is impossible for them not to escape. Both Akira and Medes are pumped, but they are working toward completely different goals. Akira wants to escape, while Medes seeks to defeat the boss of the organization. As for Diva, she's currently a pathetic mess who has lost her child. Arya tries to calm her down, but Diva is concerned because the involvement of the guards complicates the affair. The mother sobs, thinking that her child got kidnapped by the evil organization, and they will never be able to reach him again. Arya advises Diva to believe in the abilities of the boy who is wise, and will return to them. Akira and Medes stand opposing each other. Medes is disgusted by the idea of escaping with Akira, leaving the other kids behind. Akira questions what Medes thinks about defeating the boss. Akira thinks that Medes is naive, since they have no information on the enemy's strength. He compliments Medes' strength, and even gives him the benefit of the doubt that he could defeat the evil cult. However, the situation calls for a strategic response. Akira offers that charging blindly at the enemy would jeopardize their safety, and that it would be much better if they tried escaping, and asks the others for help. Medes is turned off by the idea, and questions if Akira thinks he will go mad. Medes scolds Akira and explains that even if they did escape and speak of the hideout of the organization, they might secure their safety, but the children who are kidnapped are sure to meet their doom. Medes' words horrify the boy, who succumbs to the realization of the worst possibility. Medes believes that the enemy will erase the proof of the children by sacrificing all of them. Akira is forced to agree. Medes questions if Akira is still firm on the idea of escape up until this point. Akira is frustrated, but he can't refute any of Medi's arguments. Akira himself agrees with the idea that both of their powers could bring about the best possible future. Akira tells Medi's that he is true, and that his thinking is indeed shallow. However, the selfish Akira counters that if they fail to defeat the evil cult, they will die along with the rest of the kids. Such words disillusion Medi's. The scene switches to the lair of the evil cult's leader, who is sacrificing the souls of the child. Their objective is to resurrect an entity, using the pure souls of the children. With the difference in their opinions, Medes argues that he doesn't care about letting his life down for the sake of his beliefs. Medes doesn't want to involve Akira in his troubles, and reveals that the boy can escape all he wants. Medes intends to solo the hell out of this mission, by taking down the evil cult without Akira's help. Akira realizes that Medes is acting unwisely by rushing into an unreasonable situation. Akira is forced to follow Medes. They appear in what seems to be a limestone cave. Akira questions their location and thinks that they should escape as soon as possible. He witnesses a weird statue with an altar. Akira is getting all sorts of bad vibes from this location. Suddenly, Medes shoves his head down to hide. Akira and Medes spot the children that are being carried by the vile cult members. Medes is seething with anger and annoyance because of their evil deeds. Medes stupidly reveals their location in an act of righteousness, blowing their cover. Akira thinks that this is a terrible decision that has sealed their chances of escape. That is exactly what happens. A goth villainous appears right behind them for a welcome. Akira and Medes are barely able to turn their heads when they get annihilated by her powers. They're dealing with a very dangerous enemy when they realize that this person used magic without incantations. Medes catches Akira and asks if he got hurt. Medes tells Akira to take care of the kids while he deals with the evil cult. Medes creates an energy blade out of his sword. His eyes signal to the organization that this is indeed the hero. Medes destroys each of the cult members in his path and challenges the leader to a one-on-one -on -one fight. Medes voices his disgust for the cult people, who make others suffer for their own gains. Like any typical hero, Medes states that he refuses to back down from an enemy. 
the hero voices that beliefs stand trample over everything, and that his justice won't forgive the sins of the cult. The leader of the organization is excited to hear such words, and takes up Medi's challenge. Suddenly, a giant magic circle appears at once. Medi realizes what is about to happen. The cult leader ridicules Medi's for ignoring Akira's sound advice and charging in without thought. She thinks that sacrificing Medi's would be enough to awaken the vessel. She calls out the monster that is feared as a hero killer. An advanced golem rises from the circle with its might, shocking Akira because its enemy is capable of summoning magic. Akira remembers Arya's words about summoners being the exception, and the rarest of them all. Akira suddenly doesn't have faith in Medi's and questions what would happen if Medi's loses this battle. Akira is even forced to wonder if he should use his drawing ability in this battle. Despite his worries, Medi's maintains a look of excitement. It is as if he had been looking to defeat such a difficult challenge. Medi's tells the boy that there is nothing to be afraid of. Even though a golem is incapable of being affected by fire magic, Medi's believes it is time to bring out the big guns. Medi's charges the extent of his powers, vowing to shatter the belief that a golem is unaffected by fire magic by using a spell that surpasses all kinds of fire magic. Akira realizes that Medi's is actually about to use the strongest fire spell. Medi's releases the blaze magic, showering the golem in the flames of the phoenix. Akira is stunned by the impressiveness of Medi's spell. Medi's assumes victory in the battle, until he is attacked by the giant fist of the golem that nearly kills him. Akira is shocked, while the evil cult's leader laughs at their situation. Even though Medi's used the strongest flame magic, it didn't amount to anything against the golem. Akira sees Medi's, who has been captured by the golem. The cult leader explains that Medi's didn't really summon the real deal, and tried to imitate magic instead. She tries to humiliate him, while Akira frets about Medi's life. The advanced golem flicks a finger across Medi's face, a blow strong enough to drench his face in blood. Medi's spirit is still unshaken, despite the agonizing pain. Akira begs the evil cult leader to stop using so much force against a mere child. Akira begs Medi's to fulfill the demands of the cult leader. However, Medi's refuses to back down and doesn't regret his actions. He refuses to apologize or shrink in front of the scumbags that sacrifice children. The advanced golem bashes Medi's left and right as he suffers more pain. The cult leader dials up his torture. She tells Medi's that his friend Akira will suffer the consequences of his actions. The advanced golem charges a fist right towards Akira. Akira knows that he's in deep trouble. Suddenly, Medi's apology soars in the room. Medi's apologizes for being in the room and doesn't care about his ideals for Akira's sake. He begs Akira to run away and admits that they should have called for help instead of overextending. Medi's advises him to run, but Akira is faced with a difficult decision. Medi's states that he is willing to apologize as much as needed, if it guarantees Akira's safety. Akira reflects that Medi's is someone special. His tears aren't of someone who fears death, but of someone who bears responsibility. Medi's doesn't want Akira to get hurt, and resign his ideals. Akira is reminded of his previous life, where if he had been more like Medi's, then he could have carried responsibility and assisted others. However, in his own way, his success isolated him from everyone, hurting the ones he loved most. Medi's is far different from Akira. He is someone who would resign from his freedom for the sake of pride, but he would at the same time, resign from his pride for a life other than his own. Akira declares that Medi's is a true noble. He tells Medi's that he shouldn't apologize because he's not in the wrong. Akira believes that power shouldn't be used to hurt people like he did in the past. Akira has acquired power at the cost of hurting others. Now, following Medi's, Akira hopes to do the same as he did. Akira commands his ability, at last, to shape and define his future. Akira casts a square magic circle so large that it shocks the cult leader. Akira questions if his magic power will be sufficient for the summoning. Even though he has no guarantee of surviving this summoning, he still wants to risk it for Medi's life. Akira desires to surpass the level of the golem by summoning an advanced golem on his own. Medi's remains shocked to learn that Akira is capable of summoning magic. The cult leader is also shocked that a seven-year-old is capable of summoning a monster of a gigantic size, not to mention the fact that he summoned an advanced golem well beyond his level. That's when it happens. Akira remembers Arya's warning that he will inevitably die if he summons a higher-leveled monster. He is reminded of his days as the manga author when his design was considered subpar, despite having done seven revisions for the task. The editors forced him to struggle even when he sacrificed his sleep. Akira was called an amateur artist in front of his staff and told to struggle beyond his human limits. It brought him to the point of misery. 
Even right now, Akira relives the traumatic memories of his most horrifying moments. He doesn't care that he doesn't have enough magical energy for the task. Akira calls himself a professional, and states that the canvas itself is his field. He proceeds to simplify the design of the golem, making it befitting of his magic power while maintaining the original characteristics. The cult leader is stunned because his powers keep increasing. She orders her own golem to destroy the summoning before its completion. Vettis pleads for the boy's life as the golem tries to kill Akira. The cult leader is confident that she stopped the boy from doing something beyond her control. From the mist, Akira reveals that he nearly died from the attack, but still managed to survive. At last, he has managed to recreate something that could bear the weight of his current magic reserves. Having created the advanced golem, Akira summons his original creation. The materialization of the golem monster floors both the hero and the villain. They can't comprehend how a young boy has been able to pull such a move. Metis realizes that the boy who treated himself so humbly was speaking out of care and consideration. Metis realizes that he is the one who was naive all along. He gained immense respect for the person known as Akira. The evil cult leader laughs seeing the advanced golem, since it's not as bulky as it should be. Not only that, the creature misses an arm and its body is a mess. Akira did manage to summon the creature, but only up to the level of his magic reserves. However, despite being all of that, the creature is no doubt an advanced golem. Akira's golem proves the point with its terrifying strength. Akira commands his monster not to attack the enemy golem, because he wants to ensure the safety of Medis foremostly. Akira remembers Arya's words about summoners being useless if they were defeated first. Akira wants to play this battle strategically and initiates his attack. Akira struggles knowing that his magic duration will not last for long. Knowing that his golem is bound to disappear very soon, Akira hopes to protect Medis in that duration. He prioritizes his safety above all. The advanced golem secures Medis. Having secured him, Akira makes an exit to run away to their escape. However, the cult leader survived his wrath. Akira is troubled, because he couldn't defeat the summoner like he wanted. She uses an elemental magic scroll and questions, if the boy knows the natural enemy to the advanced golem. Tapping into the absurdities of her powers, the villainess summons the divine beast Leviathan. Akira is stunned because this water monster is supposed to be strong against the earth golem. He is terrified knowing that this monster is stronger than the others. The evil cult leader laughs in his face for underestimating them to this level. Divine Beast Leviathan releases a powerful wave. The advanced golem counters by summoning a wall to protect its body. Suddenly, the golem releases a destructive beam, catching her off guard. She knows that Akira's golem shouldn't be able to protect him from the attacks that exploit its elemental weakness. She still can't comprehend the kind of powers that remain in his body to be able to sign a contract with such a golem. Akira stands defiant and instructs Medes to run away from the golem. The Leviathan attacks them with his aqua breath. As a consequence of suffering a direct blow, the golem is defeated without fail. The cult leader tells him that his beam attacks won't work against the dragon anymore. In the end, the elemental difference is far too much for his monster. An even bigger problem arises, as Akira has depleted himself of his magical powers. He is unable to maintain his golem and questions if his life has come to an end in this world. Facing frustration and rebelling the thought of death, Akira remembers how he used to come up with something on the spot, instead of running away from the problem. In fact, Akira had been applauded for his creativity the most, to move the hearts of the people. Arming himself with the experience of the past, Akira realizes that this world is under his control, and as an influence of that design, he has mustered a solution. On an empty scroll, Akira tries to draw the elixir as fast as he can. The lady thinks that his situation is a checkmate that has no salvation. The water leviathan tears apart Akira's advanced golem with its piercing aqua breath. The woman thinks that she has seized victory at last. However, Akira's goal isn't to protect the golem, but to obtain the empty scroll. At first, he's happy, but his expression turns to grim when he realizes that the scroll isn't even imbued with magic, nullifying any chances of creation. If only he was a talented mage, then Akira could have used the magic infusion ability, but since he relied on his cheat skill only, he couldn't see a way out of this situation. The cult leader thinks that Akira has nothing left to offer. Medes advises him to run away by himself. Akira refuses and tosses the empty scroll to Medes, who instinctively catches it. Akira orders Medes to use the infusion skill to imbue it with magic. If he can't use magic, Akira has decided that this is his final chance to save them. The cult leader ridicules the boy, mocking him for self-destructing in the end. 
With the infusion magic completed, Akira draws an elixir with his item drawing ability. He absorbs the elixir, restoring both of his powers. She doesn't know how he could draw an elixir in the first place. Akira tells her that this isn't any bluff and implores her to see the outcome for herself. In a moment's notice, they summon a fire golem monster that absolutely annihilates the beast along with the cult leader. The destruction that follows is enough to signal Carl and his team about their location. Carl grows worried for his son, especially after the explosive outcome. Akira is exhausted having exhausted all of his resources. Medis stays over him. Akira is annoyed with Medis and tells him to call for help as there is no time. Suddenly, Akira turns to see the Imperial Guards as well as his father, who comes to the boy's rescue. Knowing that their safety is now guaranteed, Medis questions the true identity of Akira. Akira tells Medis to keep this a secret and explains that he's just the heir to the magic store yet he can't use magic. Medis accepts the ridiculous explanation and thanks him for saving his life. In the end, nobody truly knows the identity of this summoner.